playing out this vision as to how we should approach local content in Guyana. Um, as he pointed out, that this local content will encompass actions and policies across the government and in every sector. Today, we are here to, because we made a promise that particularly in the oil and gas sector, we will have a local content policy to guide the actions of those who are investing in this area. And it starts out with the first principle, the overarching philosophy for the development of this sector, which is sharing prosperity. It cannot, we cannot develop this sector where the bulk of the benefits we down to only to the investors and Guyanese do not see any improvement in their lives or they cannot share that prosperity. The resources belong to them and they have a right to share this prosperity. Now, in moving forward, we also that, and we have made it clear that the part of getting to that point of shared prosperity or getting more resources for the country will be a new PSA, Production Sharing Agreement, because we believe that the current PSA is stacked in favor of the oil and gas companies. We believe we took a conscious decision as a political party and our government that we will not renegotiate that contract because we believe in the sanctity of contracts. But we made it very clear to the companies in the sector that any future PSA, and for all of those companies who will have to come to the government to negotiate a PSA, the conditions will be very different and they would evolve in the direction of greater benefits to Guyana. So those are, tend to be benefits that flow directly to the Treasury. We want to assure the companies, notwithstanding what I just said there, that we are not going to be populist. We are not going to uh, make it so unrealistic, the PSA, that it becomes a disincentive for them to invest here. When we believe, we believe the sector can produce enough remuneration for both and healthy remuneration for the investors, but yet contribute more to Guyanese and their development. So we are not going to become populist because you have a lot of populism going on now. People just make some wild statements without being able to substantiate those. There must be fairness and equity, again, guiding these expectations on both, both parties. Um, we have, we understand that in Guyana, there may be limited capacity in some sectors, but we need legislation and a clear policy to guide and to, to demand, force the companies in this sector to act differently. Because from what we have observed is that many have done so almost instinctively and based on maybe common experience working with contractors of a large nature and subcontractors around the world, that they believe that this is the easiest mode of getting things done. And that may be easy, 
but we are not going to allow ease of, ease of work for the oil companies to take away opportunities from Ghanaians. So the oil companies would have to understand that they have to work differently. They have to work differently in Guyana. And so, for example, as the president pointed out, we made it clear when we were in opposition, we said to Exxon and many others that the payment system, it's not just about local content, but the payment system where you have 90 days credit. Small companies cannot extend 90 days credit or 60 days credit to the big, the big companies. You have to have a payment system evolving that would allow at least services and, and goods below, supplied below maybe a, a, a threshold that those have a different form of payment where people get paid within 30 days, etc. cetera. The, the, the big companies, subcontractors with, with heavy, healthy credit ratings and deep pockets can afford to do that. Small companies cannot. So it's not, I just learned oh, a, a few days ago that you have companies here coming to Guyana, hiring doctors, paying them local rates, and then possibly billing the oil companies the US rates, and, and then that comes out of cost oil. But the local doctors are getting a fraction, although they're providing the service, but it's organized through someone else, they, they, they're getting a huge, huge, huge payments. And this has gone on for a whole range of services. When we look at what they build the company for and what prices are paid when the subcontractors farm it out to, to Guyanese, what prices are paid to them. It's a fraction of what they get paid. So they, a lot has to change. We know we cannot build. We don't have the capacity to build the FPSOs. But for Christ's sake, we have the capacity to supply taxi services and vehicle services. And all people have enough money to build good quality homes to rent to the oil companies and a number of these things. That's where they have to, they have to, the companies will have to utilize local resources. That is for us to get up to even a tiny threshold of over overall expenditure of these companies when you consider the things that we cannot do here in Guyana. And so we are gonna have special carve outs, of course not substandard carve outs and not uncompetitive rates too, not to, to corner the market for Guyanese where they charge unrealistic rates, but also they have to find a place to go with this industry. And, and this will involve every sector. We do not want to be rigid in setting thresholds without consultations with the sectors and with the companies themselves, because they are n many of these things are very nuanced. And so, for example, the insurance sector, what sheer if we want part of that business to come here, what share realistically can, can come here, given the, the state of our own insurance company? How much more would our banking system be used? How much flow through our banking system will come so it can not all the, the funds are paid from abroad? Um, these things in contract, construction and subcontracting and and also, if the subcontractors are getting concessions, how they utilize those concessions to bid on other types of work that local people who are bidding on similar work, they don't get similar contract concessions, so they're placed at a competitive disadvantage. All of these things 
we have to go through in great detail. We may not be able to do so in, in the legislation because it might be rigid there, but definitely through regulations from time to time. So we may pass a core legislation and then but improve these or move the targets so the targets could move over time through, through in a graduated way through, um, through the regulations. Um, this, is, this is absolutely necessary. Our people have to feel this prosperity. They have to be trained in the sector. There has to be more spent on training of our people and it's on building capacity, even the capacity to monitor the, the industry. There is still, as the president pointed out, there has to be a rigid compliance and monitoring all of these things because we can't just leave it to the goodwill of individuals. And with the best intention, often this doesn't happen. And so, the local content policy shall not be, is not created to disincentivize investment, but it's part, it's, it's a promise that we made to our people about sharing, shared prosperity. And this has, has to happen. And this, this policy would be bolstered by, as I said before, in the future, the evolution of the PSA and other things. I wish to thank, um, Sh Sham Nocter, and Anthony Paul and Carl Greenage and Floyd Haynes and Kevin Ramnarang. These were people who worked, the president put together that panel and they, they worked on the consultations and putting together the first document. And then in house within the ministry, they drafted, they tried to pull this into a policy. Both documents are shared online. You'd have an opportunity so the, the, the consultation shall remain open for one month. We will have, you can, anyone, all Guyanese would, would advertise it in the newspapers. They can come online and share their views. You can continue doing so if you don't wish to do so here today formally. Um, we will meet with the oil companies to see that we have that nuance approach moving forward so that we don't put in here something that's totally unrealistic and cannot be achieved. Um, we want to move this forward as a national um, There are companies all in the leadership. When we met with them, they all said they believe in the vision of shared prosperity. Too. So this is not about fighting each other. This is about moving forward. But Guyanese, um, but Guyanese have to, they have to benefit more from this sector. And, and, and then, of course, the president's vision about the other, the broader sector, the national economy, more local content in that too. But today, I think we're gonna move forward this component as it relates to the oil and gas industry. So, so with, those, with those few words, I just want to open the floor for comments and for suggestions where the consultation is formally open here. As I said before, you don't have to. The president pointed out about definitions too. One thing that we have to be very clear is that the definition of what a local company is to a local individual, that it cannot be played. It can't be a token sort of thing, as he said, you can't just incorporate a local company and think, you know, that you suddenly qualify for local content. There has to be some real benefits here to, to our people. And so we're still flexible, open on that. And so we'd like to hear, hear you a bit more about that on, on that, that issue too. But yes, and so, just let, me, let us know the name, the organization, so we can make the notes. But the floor is now open. Thank you very much once again for coming.